All right, good morning and welcome everybody to the Health Transformation Webinar. I am your host, Kate Archibald. Really excited to be here with you guys today. And with me, uh, as, as the norm, we got the, the one and only amazing founder of East West hey. Health, just an all around decent guy, Reagan Archibald. Decent. Decent. <laughs> Reagan, how you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? Good, very good. Looking forward to uh, diving a little bit more deep into sleep. So we, we talked a little bit about sleep last week, right? Yep, yep. And uh, we're going to be diving even deeper and because uh, I like a good deep sleep. Yes, and so do I. And so I've got my Valky and it's working right now. So you can see last time we had our blue light block and glasses. This time I'm putting yeah. some nice blue light into my brain because it's the morning time. So it's time to like wake up and get your body moving and get out in the sun. And I don't know, I know in St. George, you guys have a lot of sun, but finally this morning was the first sunny morning that we've had in months. And it felt so good to get out in the sun and enjoy it. So, um, so one of the best ways we talked about this uh, last week, one of the best ways to reset your circadian rhythms is get out in the sun for about 20 minutes every morning. And uh, it's, it's amazing. And so one of the other ways I like to reset my brain is through this Valky device. And the Valky device is nice because it just gets the, the brain rhythms going and it just slowly wakes up your brain. It just puts light right into your brain through your ears. You can, there's blue lights you can put up in your nose and that helps get your brain woken up. But, but the Valky is uh, something that's very uh, simple. So, so, all right, so let's, let's jump in. Um, any questions, first of all, before we fire off? I know we, we covered a lot of territory last week and sleep is a lot more complex than, than we realized, but any, um, any questions that any of you have about sleep? No questions coming up so far. Okay, okay. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna talk about um, you know, some of the technology today and, um, and then we're gonna talk about this thing called a light bulb. So Thomas Edison, um, inventor of the light bulb, you can see him here, uh, genius, but part of the problem is we have lights on all around us all the time. So today we're gonna talk about uh, you know, how you can get a really good sleep and how you can regulate your circadian rhythms because those two things go hand in hand. So Thomas Edison, one of the things he said is, never go to sleep without a request to your subconscious. And so there's an app that you can use. And what this app is called is the Win Streak app. And it's from Strategic Coach, um, one of my mentors, uh, Dan Sullivan. And Strategic Coach is uh, just a phenomenal uh, group of entrepreneurs, of people really changing the planet. We get together quarterly in Toronto. But um, one of the things that, that Dan Sullivan recommends as well is before you go to bed at night, you know, think about the wins of the day. And then also think about how you want to transform your life the next day. What are those big things you're going to do? And so if you create that request every night before you go to sleep, when you wake up, you'll be amazed at how many problems your brain can solve when you're asleep. Because, Kay, do you remember how active your brain is? Like how much of the electrical energy of your body your brain consumes when you're awake versus asleep? Um, I, I can't remember the exacts, but I know it's a, a very high percentage. It's um, your brain, which, you know, makes up maybe, you know, three, four pounds. It, it requires about 20% of the electrical energy in your body when you're awake. And when you're asleep, it requires about 25% of the electrical energy. So your brain is actually more alert and it's busier when you're sleeping versus when you're awake. Wow. And we that did talk about cool. hydration last, last week too. So good to see you hydrating. Stay, stay hydrated. Yes. Um, so, um, so really important. Normal adults need about six hours of sleep is minimum. We like six and a half to eight hours is going to be even better. Um, I even like, I, I tend to hover. I, I'll be in bed for about seven hours and 40 minutes is my average. And I'll show you, um, some of my aura ring stats. So Kate, you got your aura ring on? I, I don't have it on right now, but I, my sleep score was up last night. 
What my was readiness, it? my readiness, I think I was at 85. Nine. My readiness today is at 89. Oh, awesome. So, okay. yeah, just ready to rock the day. That's great. I think my, we had the same readiness score. 89 is what mine was today. So, um, yeah, we're going to crush it. Um, so if you look at uh, sleep deprived people, you're going to eat more carbohydrates. Um, the, the reason why, I don't know if you, you guys have noticed this, but if you have a night where you're just kind of like insomnia or you're traveling and uh, you're just like, don't, you're out of your sleep rhythms. Well, you notice how hungry you are the next day and you're like craving carbs and you just want to eat everything in sight. Well, what happens is there's, there's this hormone uh, called leptin and leptin turns off your hunger and it kind of lets you know that um, your body's satiated. But there's another hormone called ghrelin and ghrelin is that hormone that triggers feelings of, of hunger. And so, uh, okay, my Valky is done. It just beeped. I've done two cycles. Actually, I'll do one more. Um, and so I usually want to do 10 minutes of the Valky. Um, but, but this ghrelin hormone, when that triggers in, uh, you want to eat and you're hungry all the time. So one of the worst things you can do if you're trying to get your body healthier, if you're trying to get that six pack to stick out or burn some fat is not sleep great because it's really hard. I don't know how great your willpower is, but mine's like tiny. And so if I get great sleep, I don't have to use my willpower to focus on like, what am I going to eat? What am I not going to eat? When am I going to eat? Um, it's already the choice has been made. But when you have hunger all the time, it's uh, very difficult to kind of keep pushing that and subduing it. But just so you know, there is a hormonal component when you don't get your sleep. So circadian rhythms, um, you know, you're going to find that if you get to bed at about the same time every morning or every night and then wake up around the same time every morning, that's going to really start transforming your life because a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll go to sleep, you know, on the weekends, they'll stay up late, you know, Thursday night, the weekend starts, you know, for some people. And so they're up till midnight, they wake up early, then Friday, they're slugging it through the day and then stay up late, wake, you know, wake up later and the whole sleep cycle gets dysregulated. So um, the real uh, key to, to having good sleep hygiene is being consistent in your sleep patterns. Uh, it makes a huge difference. And so uh, what times do you guys like to go to bed? I mean, what are, what are some of your favorite times? Um, Kate, I know you got, you got young kids and a baby, but what do you like on an ideal day? When do you like to go to sleep? Uh, nine, 9.30. 9.30, yep. And yep. wake up around what? Six, six thirty. Okay, beautiful. And so it looks like last night you actually had a pretty good sleep. Yeah. Eruptions. Yeah, all of uh, all of slept pretty good. Yeah, it was nice. Love it. Good. Well, um, as you go through, as you start looking at your your schedule, look at your day. If you can create just like one perfect day, um, then you can create a really amazing life. And a lot of us we can't even craft that like great day because we don't have good sleep. And so the circadian rhythms are key and we're gonna talk about some ways you can balance these out. But one of the things you wanna look at, we talked a lot about circadian rhythms last week, so please go back and watch that video if you missed it. Um, but one of the things that is in epidemic proportions is a, a sleep issue called sleep apnea. Now sleep apnea is when you stop breathing at night and it's a really dangerous condition because um, if you don't breathe at night, then what starts to happen is uh, you get damage to your eyes. And that's why if you see people with sleep apnea, they feel tired all the time. They're like, man, I slept all night long and I just woke up exhausted. And then you get the CPAP machine and the CPAP machine, you sound like Darth Vader. It's like forcing you to breathe. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're not you know, you don't have sleep apnea. And there are some blood markers that we can look at, your carbon dioxide markers, even some of your bilirubin counts can be elevated. Your blood sugar can get dysregulated. So even if you feel like, man, I'm sleeping really good, but I still wake up in the morning feeling super tired, my eyes don't feel good, my, my body just feels kind of wasted, well, we need to check your blood and then you may need to get a sleep study. But really what we found is if we can correct 
uh, your internal physiology, we can reverse sleep apnea for a lot of people. So the other thing that happens is you'll notice you have more brain fog because you're not getting oxygenation to your brain. You'll wake up and your, your ability to tolerate stress will be a lot lower. You'll start putting on more body fat. Um, it affects your heart. One of the, the leading causes of heart disease, high blood pressure, heart attacks, heart failure, is this irregular heartbeat that can happen um, with sleep apnea, and that can induce more um, strokes and diabetes. You're going to have blood sugar issues. Um, so you really, you know, if you're noticing that, man, I haven't eaten anything differently over the last couple months, uh, but my blood sugar keeps going up, my hemoglobin A1C or my fasting glucose, well, you may want to consider the fact that you've got sleep apnea. Or maybe if you're sleeping next to your spouse and you notice that they stop breathing frequently, um, that would be a big thing. Or if your spouse snores a lot, or if you snore a lot, um, definitely start looking into that and, and seeing if you've got this condition called sleep apnea. Sleep apnea also raises the blood pressure in your lungs and so this can contribute to like asthma, COPD, um, and it can also make uh, things worse at night, especially when you lie down. So, so before you jump into all of these cool lifestyle things, which are important, but you may want to just ask yourself the question, is it possible that you have sleep apnea? Because um, it's a big contributing factor in people not sleeping well. Okay, so uh, anything on sleep apnea, Cade? No, no, no questions coming in. Um, no, I think it's uh, really important for people to realize uh, if, if that's an issue for them, though, um, especially if you're, you're sleeping through the night and yep. you still wake up and just uh, feel awful. Yeah. Uh, get, that, get that looked at. Definitely. Get it looked at. Um, okay, let's jump into vitamin D. So vitamin D is one of the most important uh, nutrients that, that you can take. Um, and I'm done with my Valky course. My brain feels so good. <laughs> uh, but, but vitamin D, what you'll find is if you're not sleeping well, your ability to assimilate and, and absorb vitamin D is going to go down. Um, if you have low vitamin D, it's going to affect your sleep patterns. Low vitamin D is also going to create more chronic pain, musculoskeletal pain. Uh, we found in our patients who have bone spurs because we do treat a lot of people who have bone on bone in the knees, um, arthritic shoulders, they have hips um, that need replaced. And we find that a lot of these patients who've had this chronic bone on bone, they tend to build up bone spurs. Or if you've had a lot of cortisone injections in your joints, you're gonna build up bone spurs. And so one of the things that we recommend is you get on some high doses of vitamin D so that you can break up some of those bone spurs. And then if, as we do our regenerative medicine therapy, stem cell injections into those joints, that can help really grow that new cartilage structure. And if you've got adequate levels of vitamin D, that actually has been shown to improve your, your stem cell uh, proliferation. So uh, vitamin D is critical. Now, if you look at your blood labs, if you've got it with you right now, most blood labs will give you the parameter of about 80 to 25. Some will go up to 100. Anything below 25 is going to be considered low vitamin D. Where we love your vitamin D to be in a functional and a healthy human is when you're between about 60 and 80 is the sweet spot for vitamin D. So if you've got your blood work done recently, look at your vitamin D because chronically low vitamin D is related to symptoms of sleepiness and it can also impair your ability to you know, feel rested and awake. So vitamin D is a critical vitamin. Um, you want to make sure that you've got vitamin K with it. Uh, it's about uh, three parts, or actually about 10 parts of vitamin D, one part vitamin K is a good ratio there. Kate, any foods that you like to get your vitamin D from? Um, I, man, I, I'm trying to think what uh, uh, milk is, is my thing. <laughs> That, I, I think that's what the first thing that, the, pasteurized. Yeah, with it like injected with some vitamin D, some <laughs> DHA. <laughs> all right, well, let's give, we'll give you that's, some tips. You eat it all the time. You just aren't aware of it. So the butter, yeah. the butter you eat, the coconut that you eat, 
the fish that you eat, all massive supplies of vitamin D. Nice. All yeah. right. I've never thought of uh, what, what vitamin D is in uh, food. I, I just, yeah, uh, that's one thing I've never considered. That uh, makes sense, though. Yeah, mushrooms have a ton of vitamin D, eggs do. I mean, there's uh, loads of vitamin D you can get, but it's a fat-soluble vitamin. But actually, vitamin D is more like a hormone and uh, works incredibly well because all of your hormones feed off vitamin D. And one of the biggest risks that you run if you have low vitamin D is you run the risk of having autoimmune disease. So make sure you're getting plenty of vitamin D in your office, in your, in your body. The other thing is... Um, melatonin so you notice that i used the valky this morning so what the valky does is it actually helps turn off melatonin so that cortisol my cortisol levels can rise up and you're saying i thought cortisol was bad reagan well cortisol is actually a really good hormone and what cortisol does is it cleans up the mess so i had a really you know i, I looked at my readiness score so i'm like i'm 89 percent this morning so i went and jumped into a heavy workout and, um, you know, I'm using the Valky as I'm driving to the, the gym, and um, it's great. But melatonin is one of the things that triggers your body to go into the sleep cycle. And so it gets released right around 7 o'clock at night. Your pineal gland makes it. Melatonin, as I mentioned last week, is a fat-burning hormone. And very important for your growth hormone. If melatonin levels are adequate, your brain's going to be able to drop into REM sleep and deep sleep. Ideally, your sleep cycle, you want to have about an hour and a half of REM and an hour and a half of deep sleep. Um, you're going to have light sleep in between there as well. Um, those are going to be really critical. Um, so melatonin levels, how do you raise up melatonin? Well, it can be increased um, with high protein, can sometimes um, elicit this. Um, tryptophan is a way of, of triggering uh, melatonin release. So eating that avocado with your evening meal every night is a great way to get more tryptophan. Um, sometimes it, even ingestion of carbohydrates. So if you're someone who tends to be, um, you know, if your blood sugar is dysregulated, save your carbohydrates for night. And I know a lot of our ketogenic patients, they just forget about the carbs. They think all carbohydrates are bad, which is not true at all. So you wanna make sure you're getting your carbohydrates at night and that's gonna help you sleep much better. Um, so eat you know, 50 to 100 grams of very healthy carbohydrates at night. Uh, Cade, any favorite carbohydrates you like to eat? Yeah, sweet potatoes, yep. um, yams, we got um, to, sourdough bread. Bread in general, like that—that's the problem. Yeah, fruit. who doesn't like a little? But no, I um, a little bit of sourdough bread. I, I it's uh, it's dig that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the gluten's a little more fermented. Um, I love the rice. Um, we had rice last night. Um, slept great. So, so yeah, there's some healthy carbs you can you can put into your diet very easily. Um, Exercise is another way. I mean, exercise kind of mitigates a lot of damage you do throughout the day. And so exercise, it depends on the time that you exercise. So some, some of you love to exercise first thing in the morning. Some of you exercise later on. We're going to have a whole training on exercise and the best exercises for you. But the other thing is getting your nitric oxide levels up. So valerian is a way to do that, extra doses of magnesium. And then one of the things I love at night is a little bit of beet, uh, some beet juice. That increases the nitric oxide level, which improves your circulation. So it's also good if you're going to have some, some uh, lovemaking time at night, which is a great time to do it. Um, probably never a, a great time not to, but at night is a great time. And so a little bit of beet juice can um, help uh, induce some, uh, some nice blood flow to the, the nether regions. All right. So... Here's some exercising, and um, if you think about this, so what I want to do is um, we're going to go, we want to spend a lot more time on exercise, but I want to share with you um, some of the ways, we'll come back to this in a minute, but some of the ways you can track it because, you know, I talked about the Valky, um, we had our blue light blocking glasses on um, last week, but I'm going to kind of uh, shift gears just a little bit, and I'm going to pull up some Aura Ring, um, things that you can do. Let me um, see if I can figure out. I don't know how to. Kate, can you stop share for me? 
or am I sharing still? Oh, here we go. I got it. There it is. Okay. So give me just a second. I'm going to pull up some of my aura ring stats for you guys to look at because I think it's, it's really important to actually know what you're doing instead of playing guessing games with your sleep. It's really cool if you actually just know what, where you're at, know what you're doing. And so I'm going to pull up just four major uh, stats from my aura ring. And an aura ring is um, something that's really cool. We got, Kate and I got introduced uh, at, at the uh, biohacking conference. But um, here we go. So now I'm going to share my screen. And then you guys can see some, some cool novel ways that you can um, track what you're doing at sleep. So, so, okay, here's one. So readiness. So you can see this here. Um, you can see, uh, they're checking heart rate variability, your resting heart rate minus about 48 beats per minute. Um, heart rate variability is 75. That was uh, yesterday. Um, my, my sleep last night, my respiratory rate was about 16 point four per minute um, that's how many breaths I was taking and uh, my readiness level like I mentioned was 69 so or 89 so that was actually really good um, previous night sleep my sleep score was 84 sleep balance is optimal previous day activities so I've, I've got the right amount of activities in the right amount of sleep balance and it makes uh, for a much better day so um, now let's look at another one Kate, anything you want to add to that yeah, that, that looked uh, uh, pretty solid. So that was last night? It was last night, yep. Very nice. Um, no, I, nothing really to add. I think um, what I really like about the Aura Ring is you can actually see, like, it'll make recommendations on how to, you know, what type of day you should have, whether it's, like, Hey, you can go all out today, you know, push yourself. Or if it's like, Hey, you didn't sleep that great. You need to focus on recovery, do, you know, lighter, lighter, uh, type exercise. So your, your body can uh, recover better from not having the ideal sleep. Yep. Um, so I, I think those are, uh, really, it's, it's really cool insights. Yeah, I, I dig it. So here's another one. This is, um, this shows heart rate variability. So as you guys can see here, and for those of you who don't know what heart rate variability is, um, heart rate variability is the amount of um, like space between contractions of your heart. So you want your heart to beat and then relax, beat and then relax, beat and then relax. If your heart's just beat, 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 there's no relaxation, that means you've got way too high of stress. And so the variability, like my max, you can see my average variability was, um, you know, 75 per millisecond. My maximum was 140 variabilities per millisecond. So that's actually really good. If, if I could have kept my max closer to 140 milliseconds, like that's like perfect. My, my readiness would have been like 100. But um, average 75 is really good. You don't want to drop below about... 20, 25 is when your body's in big time stress. And so the cool thing about the aura is I can wake up and I can look at the aura. And aura, by the way, is spelled O-U-R-A. And uh, you can go to aura.com and get all the details there. I wish we had a, a link or some uh, special we could do for you today. But, um, but it, it is one of the best, most impressive tools as far as sleep goes. You put your phone on airplane mode. All the data gets uploaded in your ring so that you're not getting any EMFs at night. And then in the morning, you put your ring on the sensor. It gets uploaded into your phone, and then you've got the data right here. So heart rate variability was uh, very powerful there. Um, okay, uh, let's look at uh, one more. Um, here's where you can look at REM sleep. So REM is pretty – that's the rapid eye movement. So um, – you want to be, if I was about a hunt, an hour and 30 minutes to two hours, my, my REM sleep would have been a little more optimal, but I actually got more REM sleep than I typically do. So what rapid eye movement is, is it plays an important uh, role in re-energizing your mind. This is associated with dreaming, memory consolidation, learning, and creativity. And uh, for most people, the average REM is between 20 and 25% of your sleep. So about an hour and a half to two hours is going to be 
you know, the typical, like a healthy REM cycle. And so uh, usually as we age, our, our totals decrease um, of REM sleep, but REM is going to be regulated by your circadian rhythm. So if you're wearing your blue light blocking glasses at night, you're getting into the sun in the morning, this can really help you drop into a deeper REM sleep. And I think it's uh, one of the most critical things. Okay, so REM is uh, phenomenal. And then I'll, I've got one more that we'll share um, just as we kind of finish up here. And um, this one is where you can just see your sleep efficiency. Um, and uh, so my efficiency was 93%. Total sleep was seven hours and 21 minutes. Um, my sleep was 84. So could have, if I could have uh, slept a little longer, it would have been great. But one of the things they're looking at with efficiency is how fast you fall asleep. And so, um, you know, you can see my time in bed. You can see there's some moments where I was awake. Uh, my total time in bed was almost eight hours and I try and block it. I'm pretty uh, strategic about eight hours in bed every night. Uh, but my total sleep time was um, seven hours and 21 minutes. So your efficiency, if you fall asleep within that first like 15 minutes by the time your head hits the pillow, um, that's how they're measuring efficiency. And then when the alarm goes up, you pop out of bed, that's another thing. So, so these are some cool tools that you can use. Um, we covered a couple of them. The Aura Ring, it's, it's kind of stylish. The Valky device, you can put some light into your ears. All these things to help improve your sleep are great, but the biggest thing that you can go back to doing is exercise every day, eat the right foods, have time-restricted eating in your diet, you know, make sure you got that 10 to 11 hour window only where you're eating. Give yourself three hours uh, before you go to sleep after your last meal. And you know, get some tryptophan, eat some avocado, make sure you're getting carbohydrates at night and you're gonna sleep like a champion. So, so get to bed, everybody. Actually, wake up, it's early, so. <laughs> it's time to wake up and then get to bed at a good time tonight. Yes. All um, right, any, any some good sleep. Definitely. Anything you wanna to add to that, Cade, before we finish? No, I, I think that was, uh, that was really good. Um, yeah, so you guys can take a look. If, if you feel like um, you're, you're having a tough time sleeping or you know, you'd like to inc improve your overall sleep or improve your overall help, uh, reach out to us. Um, you can uh, shoot us an email. At, I think easiest way would be Cade, C-A-D-E, at AccuEastWest.com. That'll go directly to me, and then I'll, I'll help direct you to where you need to go or reach out to one of our offices across Utah and we can um, you know, really help refine your sleep. Um, if, you, if you are sleeping through, you feel like, you know, I, I just got eight hours of sleep and I should feel amazing and I don't, um, there's probably some underlying problems that you need to have addressed. So um, get into our office and let's, uh, let's figure it out and get to the, the root cause and, and see what we can do to help you out. Um, thank you guys for joining us. We'll be same time, same place next week. Really look forward to seeing you then and uh, have an amazing Wednesday. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks, Kate. Bye-bye.